Hi guys, my name's Thomas Busby and welcome to this landscape photographer's mission to try and find the best wide angle lens available from Fujifilm. Today we're having a look at the 16 to 50 and the 15 to 45. So throughout quite a lot of this video, I'm going to compare these two lenses to the 8 to 16 mil. And now I'm not in any way saying that these two lenses compete with this mega beast of a lens. This is definitely one of the best lenses you can get. However, if you are feeling you are getting held back in your landscape photography because this is all you've got, this is all you can afford, this video is going to prove you wrong. Now as this is a zoom lens that goes all the way up to 50, but this video series is mostly focusing on the wide angle options as an 18mm or less, for a lot of the sharpness for now, I'm going to be talking about this at 16mm. If you want to know a little bit more about how to hack a bit more power out of this lens, check out the final thought section later on in the video. So at 16mm, unfortunately this is getting near the lower end as far as sharpness goes. Don't get me wrong though, it's pretty phenomenal. And if you use this as an f5 to f10 lens, you can get some pretty fantastic results out of it. The 15 to 45 on the other hand is actually a really impressive lens at 15 millimeters. It's it's really really sharp, like tack sharp, up to about that f5.6 kind of thing, and still really good up to f9. And the corners even hold together all the way through from that 3.5 to f9. So as long as you don't use the second half of the aperture, this 15 to 45 is one impressive little lens. As far as value for money goes. These come pretty much free with every single camera, like I said earlier. And what makes that so amazing is you can snap up some really good second-hand ones that haven't been used, that are nearly sealed in the box, untouched, just because people get them and they don't want them. But to be honest, they're phenomenal. Like, I'm really, really impressed with the 15 to 45. So as far as that quality goes for the price of it, which is very, very non-existent, or very, very low for a lens anyway, these are awesome value-for-money lenses. Now, when it comes to versatility, these are actually pretty awesome. So I'm comparing a lot of the sharpness and the quality out of these lenses for that 15 and that 16 millimeter options. We're focusing on what angle. But for landscape, I definitely use quite a bit of zoom. Like it, it happens and it pops up. So having that extra versatility up to that 45, 50 millimeter range makes these get quite a few extra points just for those extra tools you can have in your kit. And to be honest, they hold up with that sharpness quite the way through the range. Now as far as some of the features go, the 15 to 45 takes a 52 millimeter filter and the 16 to 80 takes a 58 millimeter filter. So the 15 to 45 gets a couple of extra points just because those filters are a little bit cheaper being smaller. It's worth noting though that they both have a bit of a rattle to them. 16 to 80 is not much, but the 15 to 45, there is quite a lot of looseness to it. As a power zoom, as in this one here, when you turn it on and use it, you've got to manually twist it. But when you use this one, it is actually an electronic motor in there and it will zoom. You have less control, but it is smoother. I'm not 100% reason sure of the reason someone would want a power zoom, other than the fact that it makes it quite a bit smaller as far as physical size goes. Weight-wise though, these are both very phenomenally light lens. The only one that I think is lighter is the 18mm f2. So as far as weight goes, the kick and ass in that area there. What's actually been pretty surprising is for general focus, the autofocus on both of these has been very, very snappy. I'm testing them on the X-T4, which is a great camera as far as autofocus goes, and these lenses still in the area don't disappoint. The tracking's okay, it's good enough, you can definitely get better results, but I'm still very impressed with the speed these can focus for such cheap lenses. I guess the biggest thing about that XC in the title is these are plastic mounts. They are not the strongest. Compared to a lot of the XF lenses, you can definitely get a lot stronger. They are also very obviously quite a lot of plastic in the construction of the lenses. So they're not going to be the most durable. If you whack these around enough, they will definitely take some hits and maybe fail upon you. Also, the biggest area I feel these let down as far as landscape photography goes is they are not weather sealed. So if you're shooting mist and spray from waterfalls, near surf and the beach, a condensation from shooting at night, the best weather I reckon is just before and after rain when they're still a little bit trickling. If you get some rain fall on there and then you close it up, it's going to suck it up inside and you'll start to see some of that mold and gunge appear on the inside of your lens, which really you're just not going to be able to get clean. This 15 to 45 actually, I've owned this lens and I sold it on, who sold it to a friend and sold it to my brother and I've borrowed it back. And look, for example, this has a small, very small hair stuck in it that at f22 I can see at certain focal range. So you've got to be aware that weather sealing is not just for moisture, it is for dust, it is for hair, it is for little specks that will appear in your lens over time. And so while they are very, very cheap, they won't quite stand the test of time as some of the better weather sealed options. 
Now for those of you that are pretty new to photography and that JPEG versus RAW, when it comes to lens corrections, at JPEG there's nearly none. Fuji correct just about all of this inside of the camera. However, if you're shooting raw, then definitely near the corners you will notice, and like near some of that more contrasty content, you will notice some pretty heavy what's called chromatic aberrations. These can be like bright blue or green or even yellow or purple lines appear around the edges of where a bright part meets a dark part. Now, for those that know what I'm talking about, it's mostly just colour. Detail, etc. holds up pretty well, it's not too bad, but that colour can be very, very heavy in your RAW files. However, as it's just colour, it's very easy to remove in things like Lightroom or whatever you're using for photo editing. So, aside from the colour, as far as lens aberrations goes, distortion, vignetting and stuff, they're pretty awesome in that regards as well. As far as video performance goes, this is now filmed on the 15-45. to As far as focus accuracy goes, a lot of that definitely still comes down to your body. So as I move closer, and further away, I still feel it does a great job of tracking and I haven't heard any sound out of it. So if I turn around and point my mic at it, then move around, we'll see if we can pick up any noise at all from this lens. Right, so we've now got the mic about an inch from the camera. I'm going to walk back and forth a bit and see if we can pick up any sound from this microphone. It does a pretty awesome job of keeping quiet. I'm really impressed with the sound out of that. However, when you zoom, it definitely makes quite a bit of noise. If, I'm going to turn the mic back around. Can you hear that? So as long as you're not zooming while recording, the 15 to 45 holds up actually pretty well for video. When it comes to the 16 to 50, this is actually noticeably slower as far as AF performance goes when doing video. For stills, it's fine. I wouldn't rely on it for tracking, but for that video continual focusing, you can see it definitely struggles and searches quite a bit to find my face as I move around. It is a lot quieter as far as operation goes, but that AF performance, I'd use this more as a manual focus lens. So in conclusion, some of you might feel that I've been a little bit harsh on these two little beauties. And that is not my case. I mean, you can definitely get better lenses. But the whole point of this video was to show you some of the limitations and some of the things to avoid. With a bit of knowledge, you can definitely get amazing results. I mean, award-winning, best-in-the-world kind of landscape photography out of these two lenses. So don't use them as not good enough as an excuse. Now of the two lenses, the 15 to 45 is definitely the better winner as far as landscape photography goes. However, the 16 to 80 is still great. However, for a lot of this I was talking about using this as a 15mm lens, as that wide angle option. But the true power of these lenses comes from around that 23 to 35mm range. See, to make a wide angle lens is actually tricky. It's really hard to nail and get right. To make a 23, a 35, a 50mm lens, the more you get to that middle kind of range, it definitely gets a lot easier to create a sharp lens. So the power of this lens, the power of either of these two lenses, is to use them as a 23 to 35mm f5.6 to f9. If you need to go wider, shoot a panoramic, stitch it together, and you will get far better results. You'll get phenomenal in images, even compared to this, the 8 to 16mm, which is 10 times the price of either of these two. If you use these correctly, you do a bit of panoramic, and you overcome the limitations that I've shown you in this video, you can get phenomenal landscape images out of these two lenses. Now sometimes I wonder about my opinion, my enthusiasm coming across as a little bit biased. So first of all, this video and all these other videos are not sponsored in any way by anybody including Fujifilm. But also to prove more so that what I'm saying is the fact that you can get some incredible, awesome, sharp shots out of these cheap little lenses, here are two photos. The one on the left is shot with the 15 to 45 at 15 millimeters at f5.6. The one on the right is shot with the 10 times the price, 8 to 16 millimeters at 16 millimeters at f5.6. And as you zoom in and move around, you can see that this cheap little 15 to 45 gets phenomenally sharp results for maybe the cheapest lens you can find. As always guys, thank you very much for following along. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And hopefully this video has inspired you to get out there and shoot and not feel that you are limited by the gear that you have. As a general guide, if you've just got a cheap little zoom, use the middle range of the zoom and the middle range of the aperture, do a panoramic and you can get phenomenal results from your landscape images, even with the most basics of items. If you could subscribe to my channel, it would mean the world to me and help me get that little bit more support to keep doing this as a full-time photographer. But otherwise, until next time, I'll catch you next time.